let us come back to the to this session and uh, I just remind you where we stopped uh, we discussed the chain termination method by Sanger's um, technique okay now Sanger's technique is really beautiful uh, because it uh, is based on a uh, principle that you can terminate a growing DNA chain by using a nucleoside which lacks the 3 prime hydroxy group. Okay. Now, the problem is that with this type of technique, the, the method becomes method is not very, uh, very quick or rapid because um, you have to first of all you have to have uh, four lanes in the gel and then you can in one go you can say determine up to 100, 100 base pairs, 100 base sequences not base pairs, 100 sequence, 100 base sequences in one shot you can do. Now, suppose you have millions of base pairs in a in the genome of a of an organism. So, how much time it will take and uh, that one can uh, think of the time will be will be really it is years uh, before you can really determine the whole sequence of the genome. By the way, genome is basically the complete the whole DNA that is present in an organism. So, that is what is the genome. Okay. And this to determine the uh, sequence of the entire genome that is very difficult using Sanger's technique because first of all one limitation is that it can go up to only 100 maximum and then the second one is more important and that is that after everything is done then you have to run four lanes for the electrophoresis. These are the uh, th the two limitations there. So, people started because if you run four lanes that means your gel size will be more, your applied voltage has to be more. So, it may not be also very economic. Okay. Apart from time constant, uh, economy is also important. So, people started looking at other ways using the same principle of dideoxy nucleoside triphosphate, but uh, trying to uh, do something which can work in one type of lane, in one lane, so that you have finally, your gel you can run in only one lane. Okay. You do not have to do the four lane gels. So, four lane gels need to be replaced by a single lane. Now, initially what was done? Initially, uh, what the change that was brought in in Sanger's technique was that the primer because people see radioactivity is uh, one issue that people try to avoid because it uses also radioactive phosphorus. So, when you work uh, to determine the sequence even by Maxim Gilbert you have to use radioactivity for Sanger's method the primer had the radioactivity. Okay. So, in so people thought that okay, let us take a primer which has got which has got a fluorescent level at this end and these fluorescent levels have different colors. See one is suppose the red that is fluorescent level, another is say blue, another is uh, another is say suppose green. So, you take four different labels a green level, a red level and let me see whether I can take any other okay, a blue level, a blue is already done. So, maybe I will take a yellow, a yellow fluorescent level, yellow is not very visible that is why I was not very uh, keen to take the yellow one. Let us say I take this one, a dark violet. Okay. So, these are the four fluorescent levels that are put at the end of the primer. Okay. Now, what you do? You take your that strand that you want to um, know the sequence and in, 
in the test tube what you do earlier there were four test tubes now also there are there are um, four test tubes and in you now add in one test tube you add this primer so this primer will now be attached here okay this primer will be attached here and suppose your first test tube you are adding dd atp you are adding dd atp along with the all the d ntps and the dna polymerase and magnesium so what will happen now because you are adding dd atp so the chain will terminate wherever there is requirement of a okay suppose the chain will terminate here and another chain will terminate suppose here okay but the interesting point is that whatever you whatever oligonucleotides truncated oligonucleotides are made when there is requirement of dd atp when there is requirement of d atp instead of that dd atp is taken they will all have the same primer with this with this dark uh, dark violet fluorescence okay so in the first test tube you added this primer you added dd atp so all the truncated oligonucleotides will show fluorescence these are fluorescent levels will show this dark violet fluorescence okay now in another test tube what you do you do a very similar experiment but you take the primer which is having a green fluorescent band so if you do that then what will happen if the second one is say you are adding ddctp so then all the truncated ones truncated uh, oligonucleotides will have will have only green fluorescence uh, containing this uh, whenever there is requirement of c so that truncated uh, pieces all have will all have green fluorescence then in case of this one the blue fluorescent ones you take the blue fluorescent in another eppendorf and now you add dd say gtp so you know that for the for the blue fluorescent the oligonucleotides truncated which will show blue fluorescence there must be g that is required at that point because you are adding di deoxy gtp there and the fourth one is the red fluorescence you add the dd you add the red primer and then red red primer means the red fluorescent primer and then add the dd ttp so what hap, so what is the out outline after doing all this that in one test tube you have um, uh, wherever there is truncation of a that piece will show this dark violet fluorescence wherever there is truncation of c that will show the uh, green fluorescence and like that that wherever there is truncation of g you will that will show blue fluorescence and finally wherever there is truncation of t that will show the red fluorescence okay so after doing all these reactions in four test tubes now what you do you mix all these four contents together so all these four test tube contents are mixed together so now it will have pieces which will show dark blue dark uh, violet fluorescence green fluorescence blue fluorescence red fluorescence but what you know is that suppose you now put your everything together on a gel and run the this is an electrophoresis gel in a column you can do also glass column and then you apply voltage so all these pieces will now come down because this will be say the positive side so everything will come down and there is a laser is a laser camera which which is really aimed at this point and then whatever color comes out it will tell to the detector this is the detector which um, when the laser hits a green fluorescent oligonucleotide it records that yes yeah, this is a green now a green band has come okay so again i repeat what happens initially you just put your whole thing together so now as you apply voltage they will be slowly separated how they will be separated that will depend on the length of the of the oligonucleotide truncated oligonucleotide okay but 
this fluorescence the sequence of fluorescence bands that suppose you initially get a G fluorescent bands followed by a yellow fluorescent band. Now, yellow I have not taken suppose green then blue then suppose red and then suppose the dark violet. Okay. So, so, you know the sequence of colors now as it you continue the gel electrophoresis and so the one first band comes here it records what is the color that band goes away the second band comes here it records the color and then the third one it records the color. So, you do not have to move this only these bands are moving and finally come out that is not a problem only thing you did you should detect the sequence of these colors and depending on the sequence of these colors. So, this is the actual actual picture that you will get that is the chromatogram that you will you will see um, and then from the color of different these peaks you can tell what is the sequence whenever you see a green sequence you know that must be coming from the uh, the test tube where you have used the green primer. So, where you have used green primer you have added the D D C T P. So, there must be a C here then then the blue primer blue primer you have used a G. So, that oligonucleotide must be having a G and then you have a red. So, red one is the uh, the red one is the T T P. So, you have a T and then the dark violet you have used the ATP. So, like that the sequence will be according to the color color sequence your base sequences will be determined. Okay. I hope this is clear. So, this technique uh, to summarize that you you have to use the primer four primers with different colors different fluorescent colors okay. and then you have to do the reactions in different test tubes and you have to add the DD ATP like previously like previous cases what Sanger used his primer was same in all the cases because all are radioactive here the primers have different colors the base sequence in primers are same only the fluorescent uh, fluorescent the 5 prime which is attached to a fluorescent level which gives different colors and then the same uh, then the steps is same that you I, I add DD ATP in addition to the other uh, whatever is required all the time and then DD ATP, DD CTP, DD GTP and DD TTP. Okay, you added that and then what is the difference with Sanger's and this technique that you then you mix all this and you can run only a single gel only a single lane not a single gel only a single lane gel and then you detect the color sequence and depending on the color fluorescent color sequence if this light is required the laser laser detects the fluorescent gives the fluorescence as it hits the band and then this records that what is the color that is coming and the DNA migrates from here to there. Okay. So, this is the the next development after Sanger, but then people again questioned it that can we simplify it even further because one drawback of this method is that you are doing the reactions in four test tubes. Okay in four appendors suppose. So, can we do the reaction can we not do the reaction in one and then and then uh, do the sequence technique. So, the next challenge is to doing the reaction in only single appendor and then do the uh, a kind of a similar kind of assay, but if you use the primer of different colors you have to use different test tubes different appendors. Okay. So, then the somebody thought that the best way to do this reactions in one test tube or one epindorf is that you use the the D D those these NTPs that means the dideoxy nucleoside triphosphate you are using four different types D D ATP, D D GTP, D D C T P and D D T T P. So, what you do in the you have the in the base NTP means what you have a sugar and you have a base and the base has lot of nitrogens lot of nitrogens reactive nitrogens. So, what you can do you can put fluorescent level 
in the base of the dideoxy nucleotide triphosphate and these fluorescent levels are different for different bases okay are different for different bases that means what is done is now instead of the primer being colored differently means fluorescent label differently now what you have the primer is same but your bases dideoxy bases have different colors your dideoxy bases so in suppose ddatp so the base here is colored with a suppose a red fluorescence okay then dd gtp suppose it has got a blue fluorescence i am just arbitrarily giving some numbers as uh, some colors and then you have uh, dd ctp and suppose that is um, the green and then you have dd ttp and so instead of putting the color on the on the primer now you put the fluorescent levels on the dideoxy nucleoside triphosphates okay and these levels are in the bases fortunately the dna polymerase does not discriminate it accepts as as a substrate although the size is better because some of this uh, this fluorescent levels are quite big but the dna polymerase is is uh, not that selective it is uh, not that touchy it accepts even if there is the base has some handle which is a fluorophoric handle now what you can do you can do the all the reactions in the same test tube so you have the primary sequence of dna and you do the reaction that means you are adding all the dideoxy uh, nucleotide triphosphate so this contains your dna polymerase it contains magnesium this contains the regular primer no label in the primer and this contains dntps all the dntps that are required and then it contains all the ddntps ntps okay so you do the reaction so what will be the outcome of this now you will again have truncation definitely the oligonucleotide when it picks up a ddatp that will be truncated but that truncated will be if the truncated portion is red that means there was a requirement of e at that time when the truncated piece has is showing a blue fluorescence that means there was a requirement of g at that time okay and then the green fluorescence means there was a requirement of c and then uh, this is not green suppose this is another color some violet say and so that uh, will give another color and you can you know that okay a t is required so now what will happen you can do all the reactions in the same test tube and again do the same single lens gel and you will see what you have to do you just check what color of what is the color of the band that are flowing through the that are coming through the column eh, containing your uh, agarose gel so just checking the color sequences you can immediately write now all these things are now computerized so the computer will see whatever the colors that is constantly fed to the computer and the computer already knows that this color means this base so it will immediately write all the base sequences uh, all the base sequences okay so basically first sanger used the radioactive primer then the improvement was that using a primer containing the uh, fluorescent level but that needs uh, to do the reaction in different uh, test tubes or epindors and then the subsequent development was doing the reaction in one one container either the test tube or epindor but using the dideoxy nucleoside triphosphates differently leveled differently leveled with fluorescent markers okay then what you can do you can uh, quick in the process you have because that will be much more rapid one gel and um, you can do it uh, more number of bases can be done uh, to do this uh, because there is no 
important thing is in if you have radioactivity then you have to take the photograph of that a photographic plate has to be put on top of the gel and the next day you have to um, take the print of that you have to develop that but when you have this fluorescent levels you do not care if something has passed through suppose this color has passed through that goes away into the solution you do not you do not need to know what goes away in the solution what you need is what comes uh, what comes after what if this is the blue violet uh, band comes first so that will be first one the blue violet one if the second one which was following it if that is yellow that will come here and then it records the color okay and then these are these all goes away so you can actually take much uh, greater greater number of bases in one go okay so maybe about 600 700 bases base sequences you can do by this technique okay now why this became important as i told you that the genome mapping of different organisms of different living species was taken up scientists wanted to know why a cat is different from a dog why a dog is different from a man uh, this there must be difference in their genome sequence because everything is ultimately dependent on the base sequence of the DNA that are present in the cells. Okay. So, that is why this became a very important issue and a, a big uh, a program was taken which was called the human genome project and uh, so the attempt they attempted that uh, to map the entire human genome. Now, how many base base pairs are there in the human in the human genome in the human DNA that is 3.2 billion base pairs. Okay. So, if the Sanger by Sanger's method it would have taken 10 12 years to complete that maybe more, but what happened after all these changes this is one of the project which was finished much earlier than the predicted predicted date okay much earlier because of these new developments that took place in the late 19 in the late uh, 20th century okay and uh, that's why this became very important and that gave rise why you do not know the uh, the gene say the sequence of bases in in human because uh, because we know that <coughs> human the same drug does not work uh, may cause acidity to some person the same the same drug works very well for another person. Okay. Now, what is that? That means, every person has some differences somewhere in their gene and then if you can if you know those differences then you can what is called personalized medicine. So, today we are in the we, uh, we are in the era of personalized medicine that means, if your gene sequence is is known and then uh, the doctor just check the gene sequence and say that okay, this drug is going to work for you or this drug may not work for you. So, now this is person specific although we are not right there, but now in the in the western world there are cases where personalized medicine especially when they treat cancer they actually adapt this they know the gene sequence very quickly of that person and then compare with a healthy individual and then immediately they can find that this is where is the problem. So, this type of medicine has to be given to that person. So, this is what is called personalized medicine and that is only possible on after the development of the human genome project. Now, even the human even these methods that I have told you the fluorescent based methods that also take uh, 3 4 years to complete the to complete the process of a of sequencing of DNA sequencing. I give you some statistics here see human genome project the goal was to sequence the individual genome at an affordable price. See now if you want to take benefit of this personalized medicine you have to analyze the whole gene sequence of your uh, of your body 
but that should be at a at an affordable price if it is uh, really very large then it is very difficult so us dollar 1000 is the figure that is often quoted this would permit comparison okay of many thousands of human genome sequence and hence the correlation of specific sequence with susceptibility to particular disease i said that different diseases have different uh, that affect different um, the gene sequence the sequence of bases okay but now uh, they want that the human that the genome should be the sequence should be known very quickly because when somebody is suffering from some terminal illness you need to know the sequence very rapidly so that the proper medicine can be given and also it should be at an affordable price it cannot be it cannot be that thousands and thousands of dollars have to be spent that is number one and number two is that it cannot be that it takes months and months or years to know it eh? because somebody who is terminally ill he might have only two to three months so by that time you have to know the gene sequence and um, and give the proper medicine so now it is the era what is called next gen sequencing next generation sequencing now we have more rapid method of sequencing okay even 3 4 days what uh, uh, what is now the development is that within 4 5 days the the mapping the base sequence can be mapped can be can be can be determined okay there are again in next gen sequencing next generation sequencing there are different methods i will not uh, describe all the methods i will just take one of that text gen sequencing there are uh, some method which is called the illumina method uh, that is uh, developed in cambridge that um, but the principle is that uh, principle is that in earlier methods whatever we have said they are not real time real time determination of the base sequence what is real time determination of base sequence that when the base is added when your dideoxynucleoside triphosphate is added or any other correct base is added at that time you cannot determine the the result what you have to do you have to wait till all the reactions are over then compile them and do the electrophoresis that is not real time because the experiment you have done and then ultimately you analyze the after that you do the electrophoresis and then uh, come to a come to the result okay so but the real time is that whenever the base is taken at that time you know which base has been taken if you can do that that means what i am saying real time analysis is basically this that whenever a base is taken added here you immediately know that which base is being taken and whenever the next base is added you have to you immediately try to know what is that added this is what is called real time real time determination okay this is is appeared to be very very difficult that how do we know that i have a dna piece and one base is added and i want to know which base is that okay now <coughs> some people did actually the base is having uh, like your dideoxy earlier i said the a base is having uh, this fluorescent marker and if you can amplify if you can amplify these strands so you have many strands suppose and then if the base has a has a fluorescent marker so whenever so everything is attached to the primer so now suppose the there is a requirement of a so you don't add the dideoxy here if there is requirement of a you attach to a a fluorescent level okay and you should have a detector which is extremely powerful that whenever a is added there is a constant uh, shining of the light at this point so a is added and you know that what type of fluorescence you are getting and from that color of the fluorescence you can determine the sequence that this is my sequence okay that is one way of doing it but today uh, i am just concentrating on another one which is called pyro sequencing okay pyro sequencing is 
based on a method based on this chemistry that whenever I told you that the DNA uh, polymerase joins the oligo growing oligonucleotide uh, uh, to a new oligo to, to a new nucleoside triphosphate. So, for DNA synthesis what you need is a oligonucleotide which should have a 3 prime OH and which should have a triphosphate. Okay. So, this is your the chemistry that is happening this is attacking this phosphate that goes out. Now, what comes out is what is called a diphosphate or a pyrophosphate P P that is that is an inorganic phosphate no organic uh, no carbon is there. Okay. So, an organic the inorganic phosphate comes out diphosphate comes out and uh, in turn what you have if the DNA had n number of nucleotides earlier. Now, after this reaction you have n plus 1 number of nucleotide and a pyrophosphate molecule is generated. Okay. One pyrophosphate molecule is generated. Now, what you do this pyrophosphate was found that it, that to react uh, I think the next slide to react with something which is called the structure let me see where is the structure. Uh, yes. So, the first reaction is that you have a DNA residue you added uh, the DNTP. So, what you have you release a pyrophosphate P 2 O 7 4 minus. Okay. Now, this P 2 O 7 this pyrophosphate it has been found that there is a compound called adenosine 5 phosphosulfate that means, you have adenosine what is adenosine? that you have adenine here and you have OH here that is adenine adenosine, but then if you have a phosphate here. So, that is adenosine phosphate, but in phosphate you have if it is a diphosphate then you have another phosphate here, but in this case you have a sulphate. So, you have C S double bond O double bond O O minus. So, that is what is called adenosine. 5 prime because it is at the 5 prime uh, where it is attached 5 prime phosphosulfate phosphosulfate. Okay. Now, when this diphosphate is generated, so there is an enzyme called ATP sulfurylase. What is sulfurylase? It breaks the this bond and puts the pyrophosphate here. Okay, if you put the pyrophosphate that means, the diphosphate. So, this goes to the this goes to your uh, the triphosphate and the sulphate comes out. So, the reaction is pyrophosphate plus adenosine phosphosulphate in presence of the enzyme ATP sulfurylase gives ATP plus sulphate. So, a molecule a high energy molecule is generated which is known which is our ATP. Now, this ATP reacts with a compound called luciferin. Luciferin is a compound which is present in fireflies which gives light intermittent light comes out of the inter of the insect which is called the firefly. So, this luciferin in presence of molecular oxygen and in presence of this enzyme which is called luciferase. It reacts with ATP and then forms an oxygen and forms what is called oxyluciferin this is the structure and in turn it generates light. Okay. It generates light again I repeat. So, in the pyro sequencing what is done you take your DNA strand you add the primer that is requirement and then in a say in a test tube I am just simplifying it you have added this you have added that. Okay. Now, what you are doing you are adding this you are adding the the D first suppose you are you have added D ATP okay. 
and then add also you have added ATP sulfurylase that enzyme sulfurylase and you have added luciferin many things it appears that how does it work eh, with so many chemicals inside luciferin and you also add luciferase that is the enzyme which generates light when luciferin reacts with ATP in presence of oxygen. So, light comes out okay. and also there is a third one means there is another thing it is not over yet there is another enzyme you have to add a pyrase. Okay. Now, I have told you what is the function of this ATP sulfurase. The function of ATP sulfurase, sulfurase is to generate ATP from pyrophosphate and adenosine phosphate. Actually, the, you have to add that one also adenosine 5 prime phospho sulfate that also you have to add in the same test tube. So, you have added all this. So, first the P 2 P 4 O 7 diphosphate is generated then it reacts with this and in presence of ATP sulfurylase you have added that. So, ATP is generated then as soon as ATP is generated luciferin reacts with ATP in presence of oxygen and in presence of the luciferase it generates light and then there is an enzyme A pyrase. Now, you have added D ATP to start with suppose your DNA that you want to sequence does not require a ATP to start with may be it requires a GT, D GTP to start with, but you do not know which one is the first one. So, you added first D ATP suppose it does not react if it does not react that means there will be no generation of pyrophosphate. Okay. Now, you have to before you added the D GTP you have to break down this D ATP you have to break before you add the D GTP. So, this A pyrase is an enzyme which has the ability to break these break down this D NTPs that means, any D ATP or D GTP or D CTP or D TTP they will be broken down into nucleoside monophosphate harmless products. So, basically what happens now as you have added D ATP if it reacts then you will get a light you will get some light. Okay. If it does not react then what will happen it will be broken down by a pyrase into some harmless thing. So, you then you added after some time you add the D GTP if that reacts uh, if that reacts then you will get again light if that does not react that will be broken down by the A pyrase okay. and then if you add CTP if it does not react that will be broken down. So, you will get no light in case of C and in case of uh, the next one say TTP either you will get light or you may not get some light. So, basically what the, the whole thing measures the instrument measures is the light how much light is generated when you are adding A means deoxy ATP when you are adding deoxy GTP or when you are adding CTP or when you are adding TTP. Okay. So, if there is no light that means, that is not required at that moment. If there is light that means, there is a requirement of that base at that moment okay. and sometimes what happens if there are two G's suppose, which are required one after another. Then what happens as you have added your D G T P. So, both will be incorporated one after another. So, you will get a light which will be twice the intensity if there is requirement of only one G T P that has to be clear. Huh? So, what you do you added the G you have this kind of a uh, the graph like this. So, what will have in this in this direction you have whatever the basis you are adding 
one after another and on these y axis you have the intensity of the light. Okay. So, from this uh, picture what you how to know what is the sequence. So, you have added g here and that is the intensity that you have get got uh, intensity of the light. Remember the light comes from the generation of ATP which reacts with Lucifer, uh, luciferin to give oxy luciferin and in presence of that happens in presence of luciferase enzyme gives the light. Okay. The intensity of the light will depend on how many g's or how many c's are required. So, now you after g you have got some intensity that means this is required then you add the e TTP and you see that there is a light which is double the intensity of T. Okay. Then you have added C practically no light. So, that means this is not required then you have added a G. So, you get the light of this intensity then T there is practically no light then you added C you see the intensity is so much that means it is three times whatever you have done, you have got your base value is basically this when one of the bases are incorporated. So, now it is easy to read from this what is the sequence of the DNA this is G then the T has twice the intensity of the of the of the light that is emitted when you have added the D G T P. So, that will be there are two T's that means there are two T's because you have double the intensity then there is no C because you have not got any light then there are two A's then there is a G 1 G because the light is the best value of the light that you get then there is no T then there are three C's. Okay. So, that is the way to read this diagram. Okay. So, I think this is what is called pyro sequencing and uh, I said there are other methods next gen sequencing, but all depends on uh, one is di all are direct means at the time when it is added you are analyzing the product and then you are analyzing your computer will ultimately tell you what is coming out, what is the sequence of the basis. Okay. Thank you.